How far can we fly away from our galaxy before we lose contact? Hey, Mr. Banana! <laughs> what? I can't hear a word you just said. Huh? Oh, my yellow friend. Why don't you just go to another galaxy and talk to me from there? It's irritating! Okay, while my potassium friend is away, I'll tell you guys about the limits of how far humanity can go in the universe before we lose any contact with Earth. How long would it take to travel to the stars? Like it or not, space is very large, and our technology is still very limited. So, most likely, even the most optimistic people and space invaders would be disappointed and discouraged. In the future, should mankind wish to leave the solar system, we'll have a huge choice of stars we could travel to, and many could have the right conditions for life to thrive. The closest star to our solar system is Proxima Centauri. It's quite logical to plan going there first. It would be some kind of interstellar pit stop for our ship. Proxima Centauri is about 4.24 light years from Earth. Yeah, not far. We'd love to think that in the future such travels will look like super speedy warp flights from Star Wars or Star Trek. But we could not be more wrong. In all likelihood, any deep space mission will likely take generations to get there, rather than a few days or in an instantaneous flash. But it would be an extremely time-consuming or expensive scenario for getting to even the closest stars. Let's cut to the chase. It would take from 81,000 to 114,000 years to traverse the 4.24 light years between Earth and Proxima Centauri, depending on your speed of flight, of course. To put that time scale into perspective, that would be over 2,700 human generations. Whoa, who would we report that we got to the place? What if Earth isn't even there anymore? The farthest man-made object from Earth. In the 1980s, the Voyager 1 probe used Saturn and Jupiter for gravitational slingshots to attain its current velocity of 60,000 kilometers per hour, 38,000 miles an hour, and make it into interstellar space. We received a lot of data while a tiny space probe was traveling through the deep void of space. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are the longest operating spacecraft in space history. Voyager 1 is almost 21 billion kilometers from Earth, but we still are able to receive data from it and communicate with it. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Sometimes I can't hear Mr. Banana from the next room, but NASA guys communicate with old fancy Voyager 1 all right. Well, they have tools, you know. A signal is transmitted from Earth to the space probe using radio waves. We send a really strong signal, but as it travels through space, it really weakens. When we send some sort of message, we have to wait for almost 20 hours before the probe receives it, and 20 hours more to get the answer from it. The power of the signal and the sensitivity of the receiver are crucial for communicating at such huge distances. Thankfully, Voyager 1 isn't too far, and we still can hear back from it, despite the fact that it would build a long time ago and doesn't have new technologies on board. The important thing is we are constantly improving our receiving devices and antennae, new technologies and ways of sending the signal appear. So, it's not really important how faint the space signal is, it's important how well equipped we are to receive and analyze it. There are no limits to what we can explore. We cannot really fix a distance limit to radio communications, therefore the range of communications depends on the sensitivity of the receiver, how sensitive it is to be able to receive very weak signals. The farther our spacecraft would be from our planet, the longer it would be taking to send and receive signals. Technically, there's hardly a limit on how far we can communicate with distant objects. However, if we're still talking about Voyager 1, it's necessary to mention that in about eight years, it will run out of power. Yep, it's not indefinite. Its cameras were shut off to save precious energy. Also, only four out of 11 data collecting devices are still working. Engineers at NASA are of the opinion that communications with the Voyager spacecrafts will cease by about 2025 or so, only because the power will not be available anymore and all instruments will be switched off. <laughs> Operating for over 37 years, the spacecraft still communicates with a deep space network to receive routine commands and return data. Mr. Banana, this is incredible! Huh, still pretends he can't hear me. Can we leave the Milky Way and reach the stars? Even leaving the solar system isn't an easy thing to do. First, you need to spend a whole lot of fuel and reach outer space. Then you could use planet loops to speed up your spacecraft. Which sounds pretty simple, while it's not a matter of mere coincidence. You'll need to wait until the planets are in right places so you could use them for speeding up. 
You will have to be very lucky, because due to the position of the distant planets like Uranus and Pluto, such planet's position happens once in 127 years. Once you leave the solar system, the closest and most logical place to go would be Proxima Centauri. Once you were there, it would take you more than 25,000 light years to get to the nearest galaxy, the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy, and 2.9 million light years to reach Andromeda. Whoa! Millions and millions of years just to reach the outer edge of Andromeda. Well, this sounds depressing. Plus, think about the size of the spaceship we'll have to construct and build. It would have to be large enough to provide thousands of generations with comfortable life conditions. This problem actually changes with improving technology. The universe is out there, waiting for you to discover it. Would you want to go on a long-distance trip? Who would you take with you? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't be lazy. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to Smart Banana. There are a lot of cool stuff ahead.